again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. And what's better than one JLB 21101 Cheetah? Two. Now this new one is the extreme model or the upgraded version. It comes with 120 amp Hobby Wing waterproof ESC. Now that is 40 up from the original 80 amp model that you get with this one, which apparently was splash proof, but I don't believe that at all. The ADM model goes extremely quick. I just uploaded a video where this bad boy went around about 94 kilometers an hour on 4S. So that's more than enough and uh, I'm pretty sure you'd be happy with this one. But if you were buying one and considering one, I would definitely purchase this 120 amp model. It includes a new Flysky transmitter and receiver. And I'm not too sure about the servo. It says it's 15 kilo, but it, it looks a little bit different uh, than the one you get on the original model. So stick around, have a look, I'll unbox it, and we'll, I'll get the two out together so you can see the visual differences uh, between the two kits. All right, guys, here is the JLB 21101 Racing Cheetah. And as you can see, or you might not be able to read, but this is the 120 amp new version. So apparently, oh, it does have 120 amp Hobby Wing uh, ESC, which is excellent, up from the old 80 amp version, and it does have a new Fly Sky transmitter and receiver combo as well. I'm not too sure about anything else, but that's what this video is for. Let's go see what you get in the box, and uh, yeah, check her out. Now, I'm not gonna go around the box because it is exactly the same as the older one. All these specs here are the older version, as you can see, says the 80 amp ESC. So a lot of these other things will be relevant. Um, I'm not too sure about the steering servo. On the specs, it says it's 15 kilos, as per the old one. It does have metal gears and does come with a 4,000 milliamp hour LiPo battery as well. But everything else is the same. So we'll just crack her open and see what you get. Now, if you'd have been following my channel, you'd know that I really enjoy this car. It does have uh, another version, which is the older model, which is the JLB Cheetah goes by and it's kind of like a black and orange shell. That's a fantastic car. Then came this 2110 model, which is an upgraded version of that. Different body, different wheels and tires, because the original version tires weren't the best. And this one also does come with a spoiler. So I guess this is a third addition to that. So uh, I'll get the old one out as well, the 21101, and compare the innards when we get it all up and out. Okay, now, I'll pull out everything that we get in the kit, and as you can see, it comes with a nicer Fly Sky transmitter. Excellent stuff. Well, like the other one was bad, but uh, the range I found on the older version wasn't the best. Now what I'll do, I'll get all this stuff out on the bench and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail. Like a new present at Christmas. Love a nice shiny RC. I always have liked this uh, JLB body. I thought it looked pretty cool. So you get a small little uh, CD or DVD. Now is your 2S or 3S charger for your LiPo battery. You charge via the balance lead there. You know, this is good to get you out of a bind or if you don't have one, but I would definitely recommend uh, buying a decent four button hobby grade LiPo charger. You know, this might take three hours to charge and uh, nobody likes waiting for a battery to charge. Okay, now here is one of the updates. You get a Fly Sky transmitter and it is the FS GT2E. Only takes four AA batteries, which is what I always do like. Has a nice kind of style on the uh, inbuilt antenna there, so you won't never break that off. And it's got this little little window here. It's got your basic trim, steering trim, throttle trim, steering dual rates, your uh, steering and throttle reverse, a bind button, and your on and off switch. And that is it. Has a nice rubber coating here, so it feels quite comfortable in the hand. But uh, yeah, first of the upgrades. Next up, we get a set of decals or decals, and they have the front lights and the side uh, windows there. Here we go, the JLB 21101 Extreme 128 New Version. Gives us a little indication of what you get in the kit. And I'm looking at the 15 kilo servo, and I'm pretty sure that was the same one that came with the original one. But the main thing here, as you can see, two channel tray emitter, that's interesting and a brushless waterproof 120 amp Hobby Wing ESC. Last but not least, we get our basic instruction manual. Very similar to the old one. Fair bit of Chinglish in here if you want to go read it, but I do uh, like their detailed drawings and, sorry, diagrams of how to put the car back together and all little hints and tips. 
and an excellent uh, pass this there when you get in trouble you need to order the new parts. Okay, now here it is guys. First uh, glance you would not know the difference, especially just looking at it, everything looks identical to the original version and later on in the video I will get uh, the, I guess the basic uh, JLB 21101 and just compare on how it looks. Okay, first things first, like I always do, let's have a look at the Lexan body. It's exactly the same as the original, so, you know, if you haven't seen the original unboxing, I would uh, recommend go check that out because uh, this will pretty much be exactly the same thing. And yep, the body's good, just like the original. I have scratched the hell out of my old one. And if you would have just seen my latest video of the speed test of the uh, 2001, you wouldn't know why. Okay, now already this does look different. The motor here is particularly, uh, well, it looks nice. I do like this black and silver look compared to the all blue uh, anodized version of the older model. And uh, everything else seems to be in line. It does have front and rear LEDs, which is the same. But obviously we can tell these three components here are different. Now before I get up close and personal with uh, the heart of this beast, the wheels and tyres are definitely the same. It does have the same uh, kind of unique size wheel nuts there. These are a big upgrade from the original version as well. So no complaints there. They are great tyres. I did explode mine. That's the only reason why I upgraded to Proline Badlands. Apart from that, they work really well and grip on a lot of different surfaces. They are foam filled, they do have an air hole there, so if you want to go running in water, make sure you tape that bad boy up, but uh, all in all, wheels and tyres are the same. Now here we have the motor, as you can see, visually it looks different, but the specs are the same. It's a 3670 2500 kV brushless motor. That is identical to the old ones. I'm not too sure um, if the internals will change, but just from specs wise, it's the same. Now the biggest upgrade on this kit is this genuine Hobbywing 120 amp Waterproof ESC, capable all up to 4S, I believe. I have this in another car of mine, and I run 4S in there. No problems whatsoever, and this will be much better than the, you know, supposedly 80 amp splash-proof uh, ESC on the uh, older model. I wasn't really that impressed with that one. It did have a lot of temperamental issues turning off occasionally, and if you did get it wet, it did have uh, some teething issues. So this particular hobby wing, hobby wing one here. I have good experience with before in other cars and have no issues whatsoever. So I'm glad they have upgraded to this particular one because yeah, I think it's tried and tested and it's been around for a while and the 80 amp version goes well enough and it stays on the back wheel, especially on 4S. It has no problem with power that. So 120 amp will be very interesting to see how uh, we managed to keep this front end down. Now, as we get a new Flysquire transmitter, we get a matching receiver, and that is FSA3 three-channel uh, receiver here. I'm not too sure if it's waterproof, but it definitely couldn't be any worse than the uh, old one that came on the uh, standard model. Okay, so what I'm not too sure if this is upgraded on the kit is a steering servo, because on the original model, I've upgraded it from this one that came with it because I wasn't really happy with it. It was pretty slow. It felt like it didn't center very well. I've made an uh, upgraded video on how I changed it to a Hobbywing servo, and it's much better. This one here, or the original one, doesn't have any branding on it, so I'm not too sure what exactly it is. I know it's 15 kilo, well, that's what it says on the packaging, and this one in here says it's a JX5521MG digital servo, 15 kilos as well. So I'm not too sure if it's the same one, just has a sticker on it, or it is a completely different servo, uh, wait and see hopefully it is a bit better than the uh, stock one that came on the original but uh, we'll definitely wait and see when we try and test this bad boy out no difference here on the uh, other model lipo we get with it is a 4000 milliamp hour three cell 30c jlb branded uh, hard case lipo i've had no issues with their uh, batteries at all i um, i think they're really good they balance well and uh, yeah positive from me out of them you get around about 20 minutes with this uh puppy under a generous use. Now everything else here seems exactly the same. Top chassis plate, everything else is the same thickness and also these suspension, uh, sorry the shock towers and the shocks themselves are the same. All aluminium or all metal of some description with their little rubber boot on there and I've had no issues with the 
shocks at all. So I'm more than happy with the ones that come on these kits. They have a nice progressive spring pattern, I'm pretty sure, as you can see. Two different springs, so it's progressive. Have this nice silicon boot to stop any rubbish like uh, dirt and debris getting in there and uh, kind of ruining the coating on the actual shock shaft. So it's very nice to see. And from factory, these are pretty well uh, balanced. Very happy with them. And they do take a bit of a pounding. I have gave my other ones quite a hard life. And uh, so far, so good. They still are working reasonably well, albeit some steering issues on the uh, standard edition. Little look under the car, and as you can see, it is exactly the same as the original. Don't worry, guys, I'll get the old one out just to show you the uh, differences. And we also have the same wheelie bar here, which I've snapped to buggy a couple of times. I'm also I've tried 3D printing one of these, and that uh, failed as well, but I'm gonna try printing in uh, ABS, which should be more flexible for this uh, RC application. So, very interesting, very interesting to see uh, I can make something that can actually take the abuse. Now it does also include front and rear LED lights. They seem to have made this, oh, I don't know, it's hard to say, a little bit longer than it was before because the old one, a bit of a jolt or if you pull this down or in an accident, this just rips straight out of these two LEDs and also the back. The back one seems exactly the same so this wire is kind of tight but uh, yeah, not really worried about stripping out uh, LEDs, that's the least of my concerns. One thing I forgot to mention as well, as you see on this Hobbywing ESC, it does have this separate switch, which is nice. It has this nice rubber kind of coating on here, so that does help with the being waterproof. On the original one, just had like a push down button here, which I think was a lot of caused a lot of issues and um, a lot of breakdowns was because of that switch. But uh, this seems to be a much better setup. Let's just turn it on. I plugged it in. There we go. Here, front lights. Uh, working as they should and it does have rear lights there we go like the original one now what you guys are all here to see here is the standard edition and here is the upgraded model this one looks worse for wear it does have proline badlands on here because I've popped the original one I didn't change these because they were weren't uh, didn't perform at all they're great tires and especially a big upgrade from the original cheetah um, so that's the difference of this. It gives you kind of a, a wider stance if these kind of got a different offset on these tyres. And it is missing the rear wing and the rear wheelie bar because I smashed pretty much the living shit out of it, especially on how I drive and test these out. I want to see how durable they are. And generally the wheelie bar and the wing will be the first thing to go. Also, you might notice I have a different hobby wing server here. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I didn't really like the standard 15 kilo server but it was a bit lazy didn't send it very well so that's an easiest uh, thing to replace on these but the biggest thing as you can see everything else looks identical the shock towers the shock positions the wheelie bar and everything believe me are exactly the same same wishbones front uh sorry top a a arms and bottom a arms everything is identical only thing only difference i can see is the steering servo the ESC and sorry the ESC the receiver and obviously the motor that's the most striking difference apart from that making this an extreme version that's all there is to it okay so as you can see there's the original 80 amp ESC and what I mentioned before about that power switch is just here you've had to always push and hold to kind of activate uh, or turn the car on and I wasn't really a big fan about that and it is not uh, or nowhere near splash proof, splash proof at all any bit of water on that will probably cause it to uh, have a quite a terminal problem and uh, yeah, you end up replacing it into something like this, which this one comes with standard. So this is a much better upgrade. Um, the, I'm not too sure about the difference in price, might be I think $80 or something like that. I do believe it's better off just buying this one, especially just from the get-go, or might be able to upgrade it just to this particular power unit. In saying that though, this does go extremely well. 80 amps is more than enough you'd need for this. Um, you would have seen my videos and the last speed test, I've got 94 kilometers an hour on 4S with this. So it'll be very interesting to see if this will be quicker and if if it is, how much quicker because yeah, 94 kilometers an hour is fairly quick on 4S. 
and I think it was 75 kilometers an hour on 3S. So very interesting to see what the difference will be and if it's a worth worthwhile upgrade. Because everything else I can see is identical. But uh, overall, that's all she wrote for this video, guys. Any questions, like always, leave them down in the comment section below. This was sent to me for review from Banggood, so I'll leave the link in the description like I always do, and go check it out. If you haven't, please subscribe. There'll be heaps of stuff coming up, not just for these particular cars, but other cars I have as well, and some other drone uh, videos and stuff like that, some FPV footage, so I'm looking forward to that. So thanks, guys. Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.